In this video, we're going to talk about how we can install SciPy into Python on a Mac. In this video, we are going to be installing SciPy directly from the Mac terminal, allowing you to use SciPy in your Python shells, which we will talk about more here shortly. Before we begin, if you do not have Python installed, just click on that link in the top right hand corner of your screen now, or check out the link in the description down below, and you can quickly learn how to download and get started in Python. To ensure that we have Python installed correctly, and to get started, let's hit Command and Spacebar to open up our Max search feature. Then let's type Terminal. Within our terminal, let's type Python and then hit Tab. This should show you all of your Python additions. As we want to be working in the latest version of Python, let's just type 3.9 and hit Enter. This will show you a bit of information confirming that Python is actually installed. Now we don't actually want to do anything with this right this second, so let's just quit this out like so. Now, to work on our Max terminal with Python code, we need to first create a virtual environment that will contain all of our project's information. I also want to store this file onto my Max desktop so that it is easily findable. So, by typing ls and hitting enter, you should see the desktop as one of the directories that we can move into. So, let's type cd, change directory, and desktop. Now, to create a Python environment, Let's tell the terminal that we want a Python 3.9 M VENV study session. So, this is saying let's make a Python 3.9 virtual environment called study session. But you can obviously call your virtual environment whatever you wish. Now, you can see that when we list the available desktop directories, that's what ls does, we now have a folder called study session, which is the Python environment that we just created. But how do we go about entering that virtual environment? Well, as you can see here, when I list the contents of study session bin, we have a file called activate. And we are going to type source, space, or newly created environment's name, so study session, slash bin, slash activate. Now, on the left side of our input line, we can see that we are working within the study session environment. This line is telling Python to run scripts out of this study session shell only. Now that our virtual environment is created, let's ensure that we have the latest version of pip installed. Quickly though, what is pip? Pip is a Python package manager that allows us to install and utilize packages that are not a part of the standard Python library. Let's type in our terminal window, pip3 install dash dash upgrade space pip. Now, it'll either quickly upgrade your pip or tell you that you're up to date. The purpose of doing this is to prevent any potential errors that could occur during our installation of SciPy, as we want the latest version of the package manager. After we complete upgrading our pip, we can simply install SciPy into our Python environment. So let's change our directory to study session and install SciPy by typing pip install SciPy. To test that SciPy is installed correctly, let's solve a quick integral using the quad function. So let's open up our max spotlight search again by hitting command and space. And let's open up text editor. Then we need to make sure we are working with plain text and not rich text. We can validate this by coming to the top here under format and ensure that we are in plain text. Then let's type from scipy dot integrate import quad. This just imports the part of our newly installed scipy package that will allow us to integrate a function. So, let's create a simple function that we want to integrate. Let's say 4x to the power of 2. Then, we need a simple function that will interpret our string function as a proper mathematical expression. Now, we need to call the quad python function, which allows for a basic simple integration. So, we put quad, our function of interest, and our two bounds of the definite integral. Then, we can just print the result of the integration, and there we go. This will approximate the area under our curve between these two points. So let's save this file inside our newly created Python environment as area.py. Py meaning it is a Python script. Now, back into our terminal, let's navigate to our virtual environment, which I called study session, and type Python, and then our file's name, area.py. We will then receive the results of our definite integral. First results here is the area under our curve between the two points, and the second number we are given is the error of this integration. 
since it uses numerical methods and not analytical methods, meaning it approximates the answer and doesn't give you the exact answer. Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to talk about how we can install matplotlib into Python on a Mac. In this video, we're going to be installing matplotlib directly from our Mac terminal, allowing you to use matplotlib in your Python files, which we will talk about here shortly. Before we begin, if you do not have Python installed, just click on the link in the top right corner of your screen now, or check out the link in the description down below, and you can quickly learn how to download and get started in Python. To ensure that we have Python installed correctly, and to get started, let's hit Command and Space to open up our Mac search feature. Then, let's type Terminal. Within our terminal, let's type Python and hit Tab. This should show you all of your Python additions. As I want to be working in the latest version of Python, let's just type 3.9 and hit Enter. This will show you a bit of information confirming that Python is installed. Now, we don't actually want to do anything with this right now, so let's just quit this like so. Now, to work in our Mac's terminal with Python code, we need to first create a virtual environment that will contain all of our project's information. I also want to store this file on my Mac's desktop so that I can easily find it later. So, by typing ls and hitting enter, we should see the desktop as one of the directories that we can move to. So, let's type cd, change directory, and desktop. Now, to create a Python virtual environment, let's tell the terminal that we want a Python 3.9-m venv study session. So, this is saying, Let's make a Python 3.9 virtual environment called study session. But you can obviously call this directory whatever you wish. Now, you can see that when we list our available desktop directories here, that is what ls does, it lists, we now have a file called study session, which is the Python environment that we just created. How do we go about entering the virtual environment? Well, as you can see here, when I list the contents of study session's bin, we have a file called activate. And we are going to type source, space, our newly created environment's name, so study session, slash bin, slash activate. Now, on the left side of our input line, we can see that we are now working within the study session environment. This line is telling Python that runs scripts out of the study session shell only. Now that our virtual environment is created, let's ensure that we have the latest version of pip installed. Quickly though, what is pip? Pip is a Python package manager that allows us to install and utilize packages that are not a part of the standard Python library. Let's type in our terminal window pip3 install dash dash upgrade space pip. Now, it'll either quickly upgrade your pip or tell you that you are up to date. The purpose of doing this is to prevent any potential errors that could occur during our installation of matplotlib, as we want the latest version of our package manager. After we complete upgrading our pip, we can simply install matplotlib into our Python environment. So let's type pip install matplotlib. And you can see that we will begin installing the necessary packages. Now, let's go ahead and create a Python file where we will import and use the matplotlib library. So, although we could use any Python editor to create this file, let's just use the default Mac text editor. So, let's open our Mac's spotlight search feature again by hitting command and spacebar together. Then, we need to make sure we are working with plain text and not rich text. We can validate this by coming to the top here under format and ensure that we are in plain text. You can also notice that we can customize the text in the rich text, so that is another way of telling which mode you are currently in. So let's just enter the following bit of code to validate that our matplotlib is working correctly. Now that we have our Python file created, let's save the file as a Python file by typing .py at the end of the name. Then, let's save it within our Python environment that we just created earlier. If you wish to learn more about matplotlib, 
I strongly recommend that you check out our Learn Map Plotlib series here on YouTube, and I'll post a link for that in the description below if you're interested. Now, back in the terminal window, let's go to our virtual environment directory and type ls, and we can see that our newly created Python file is now here. By typing Python and our file name, when I hit enter here, you can see that we are presented with a graph. This is proof that matplotlib was installed correctly and we just ran our first Python file. Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to talk about how we can install Tinker into Python on a Mac. In this video, we're going to be installing Tinker directly from the Mac terminal, allowing you to use Tinker in your Python shells, which we'll talk about more here shortly. Before we begin, if you do not have Python installed, just click on the link in the top right hand corner of your screen now, or check out the link in the description down below and you can quickly learn how to download and get started in Python. To ensure that we have Python installed correctly, and to get started, let's hit Command and Spacebar to open up our Max search feature. Then, let's type Terminal. Within our terminal, let's type Python and then hit Tab. This should show you all of your Python editions. As I want to be working in the latest version of Python, let's just type 3.9 and hit Enter. This will show you a bit of information confirming that Python is installed correctly. Now, we don't actually want to do anything with this right now, so let's quit this out like so. Now, to work in our Max terminal with Python code, we need to first create a virtual environment that will contain all of our project's information. I also want to store this file onto our Max desktop so that it is easily findable. So, let's type ls and hit enter, and you should see desktop as one of the directories that we can move to. So, let's type cd, change directory, and then desktop. Now, to create a Python virtual environment, let's tell the terminal that we want a Python 3.9-m venv study session. So, this is saying, let's make a Python 3.9 virtual environment called study session. But, you can obviously call this file whatever you wish. Now, you can see when we list our desktop's available directories here, that is what ls does, we now have a file or a directory called study session, which is a Python virtual environment that we just created. But how do we go about entering that virtual environment? Well, as you can see here, when I list the contents of study sessions bin, we have a file called activate. And we're going to type source space our newly created environment's name, so study session slash bin slash activate. Now, on the left of our input line, we can see that we are now working within the study session environment. This line is telling Python to only run scripts out of the study session shell only. Now that our virtual environment is created, there's not much more for us to do, as Tinker is part of the standard Python library, meaning that we do not need to download any additional libraries. So, to test if Tinker is installed correctly, let's create a simple blank GUI. To do so, let's begin by creating our main running GUI window, which we can create with a variable called whatever you want, but I will call it main equals tk, for shorthand for the Tinker library, dot tk brackets. Let's save this file to our newly created Python virtual environment as a Python file, so dot py. Navigating back to our terminal window and ensuring that we are in the correct directory, we can run the Python file we just created through Python and then our file name. So, we'll type python space simple GUI dot py. This blank GUI appearing is proof that Tinker is now working in our newly created Python virtual environment. Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to talk about how we can install NumPy into Python on a Mac. In this video, we're going to be installing NumPy directly from the Mac terminal, allowing you to use NumPy in your Python shells, which we will talk about here shortly. Before we begin, if you do not have Python installed, just click on the link in the top right hand corner of your screen now, or check out the link in the description below. And you can quickly learn how to download and get started in Python on a Mac. To ensure that we have Python installed correctly, and to get started, let's hit command spacebar to open up our Mac's search feature. Then let's type terminal. Within our terminal, let's type Python, and then hit tab. This should show you all of your Python editions. As I want to be working in the latest version of Python, let's just type 3.9 and hit enter. 
This will show you a bit of information confirming that Python is installed. Now, we don't actually want to do anything with this right now, so let's type quit parentheses like so. Now, to work in our Max terminal with Python code, we need to first create a virtual environment that will contain all of our project's information. Let's say that I also want to store this file on my Mac's desktop as well, so that it is easily findable. So, by typing ls and hitting enter, you should see desktop as one of the directories that we can move to. So, let's type cd, change directory, and desktop. Now, to create a Python environment, let's tell the terminal that we want a Python 3.9-m vn study session. So, this is saying, let's make a Python 3.9 virtual environment called study session. But you can obviously call this file whatever you wish. Now, you can see that when we list our available desktop directories here, that is what ls does, we now have a file called study session, which is the Python environment that we just created. But how do we go about entering the virtual environment? Well, as you can see here, when I list the contents of the study sessions bin, we have a file called activate. And we are going to type source space our newly created environment's name, so study session, slash bin, slash activate. Now, on the left side of your input line, we can see that we are now working within the study session environment. This line is telling Python to run scripts out of the study session shell only. Now that our virtual environment is created, let's ensure that we have the latest version of pip installed. Quickly though, what is pip? Pip is a Python package manager that allows us to install and utilize packages that are not a part of the standard Python library. Let's type into our terminal window pip3 install dash dash upgrade space pip. Now, it'll either quickly upgrade your pip or tell you that you are up to date. The purpose of doing this is to prevent any potential errors that could occur during our installation of NumPy, as we want the latest version of the package manager. After we complete upgrading our pip, we can simply install NumPy into our Python environment. So, let's type pip install numpy, and you can see that it will begin installing the necessary packages. After doing this, we can now type import numpy as mp. This will import the NumPy library and allow us to call it using the shorthand np. So, to test that this is correctly installed, let's create a quick matrix. To do so, let's create a variable called matrix equals np.array, and then we just enter a little bit of data like so. where each square set of brackets is a new row in our matrix. Then, lastly, let's just print our matrix to ensure that it is working correctly. By typing print our matrix variable, we can see that we are printed out our matrix, which is exactly what we wanted. This is proof that NumPy has been installed correctly, and we are now ready to begin coding in NumPy. Be sure to check out our Learn NumPy playlist if you want to learn more about this incredible Python library. Just some final notes. If you want to leave our current Python environment in the terminal, just type quit to tell our Python that we want to quit our current Python shell. And then you can use deactivate or reopen another terminal to get back to our main terminal window. Then to re-enter our Python environment, we just simply follow the steps that we took earlier, like so. I hope that this video helped you install NumPy onto Python on your Mac. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and consider checking out our YouTube memberships by clicking the join button down below, or our Patreon page to support the channel. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.